ಶ್ರೀವತ್ಸವಂಶಕಲಶೋದಧಿಕೌಸ್ತುಭಸ್ಯೀವಾಸರಾಘವ ಗುರೋಸ್ತನಯ ತತಶ್ಚ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಅವಾಪ್ಯ ವಿಬುಧೋತ್ತಮತಾಂ ದಧಾನ ಕುರ್ವೆ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಿ ಗುರು ಕರುಣಾಕರಾಖ್ಯಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಾರಂಭಾಥಯಾಮು ನಮಧ್ಯ ಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮ ರುಕ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ಭಗವತಸ್ಯದಯೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸರಣೌ ಶರಣಂ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೆ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ವೆಂಕಟನಾಥಾರ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾರ್ಕಿಕೇಸರೀ ವೇದಾಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯೋ ಮೇ ಸನ್ನಿಧತ್ತ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಿ a very quick recap of what we saw in the previous class we saw about the difference between bhakti bhakti yoga and prapatti bhakti is devotion bhakti yoga is a specific path that employs devotion in a particular manner the manner is one among many prescribed by the scriptures themselves then we saw what is prapatti prapatti is sharanagati there is one sharanagati inside bhakti yoga there is one sharanagati that is independent we saw about both of that then we also saw about the pros and cons of each of these so the first three alvars we are currently looking at the fourth one correct we saw how poigai alvar spent his entire life visiting temples and praying to bhagavan that is the way a perfect bhakta would be expected to live a very very perfect one maybe we are not as great but he was bhudat alvar he lived in the best way possible the word bhuta in sanskrit right there is bhut kal vartaman kal bhavishya kal in hindi where do they come from they come from sanskrit so bhuta means what when you say bhuta kala it means past uh, tense time that happened in the past when we just say bhuta in the context of a person it means that he existed a bhut for example that kind of a word so there who exists who does not exist of the person who lives in the best way possible we say he lives he is living life why because he is living life in the best way possible if i am living life in a hopeless manner i would ask myself is this a life am i even living i am as good as dead so bhuta tarvar got called so as he lived life in the best possible way as a bhagavatottama then came payarvar like how people who are possessed by ghosts and ghosts when they possess they wouldn't want to leave immediately in the same way he possessed the thoughts of bhagavan it could be argued that the thoughts of bhagavan possessed him but we say that the way he behaved he kept on thinking about bhagavan he would never stop thinking about bhagavan he would never leave that thought he would never leave the state of being a bhagavatottama all the alvars taught bhakti in this manner and they taught the shorter path towards moksha we saw about the different paths and why certain paths could be longer than others so they all taught the shorter and easier path towards moksha we already saw how brahma deva's bhakti yoga as an example it was presented that bhakti yoga could theoretically take an infinite amount of time so as an example brahma's story was given his bhakti yoga got interrupted and he tried to come back but there again there was a second interruption so he tried a prayashita and the prayashita could not work properly for that reason he had to do a second sharanagati and in that manner it kept on prolonging 
as a matter of fact, Brahma still hasn't achieved moksha. In the younger days of Tirumarisai Advar, we are currently discussing about him, the fourth Advar, Bhargaviya, Bhakti Sara. So, in his life also, a similar incident happened. Not as in he performed Bhakti Yoga and somehow the focus went away, but that he had studied Bhakti Yoga with its eight angas. Now, this word Ashtanga Yoga, which you can see in the third point, you might see different people explaining it in different ways. In our context, we are talking about Ashtanga Yoga, implying Ashtanga Bhakti Yoga. So, the same angas that are popularly talked about, Yama, Niyama, Ityadi, they are the same ones that we have here. But what is being performed is Bhakti Yoga. He wanted to study more schools of thought and he started learning more and more. This had happened in an earlier part in his life. What we have seen, we have already seen about his Shishya. We have seen about how uh, the king came. His uh, wife told him to ask for forgiveness. All of that story has passed. But we are going back a little in his life to see an example. So here, he had gone ahead to learn more philosophies. Eventually, he left the path of Vaishnavism. This is what they say. They say he left the path of Vaishnavism. But Peyarvar brought him back to the Siddhanta. What had really happened? The incident with Peyarvar, once as Bhargaviya was going by, he saw Peyarvar. Peyarvar he took a weak rope, a weak rope with knots. What do we mean by that? We mean that the rope had given away in the past a number of times and had been tied. Its pieces had been tied to each other with knots. We do that with ropes, right? If you have a long rope and it splits into two, you don't have any other rope and you need the same length of rope, then what do you do? You tie one end of one part and another end of another part. You put a knot and again you have a single rope. In this manner, there was a rope with a number of knots, implying that it has failed a number of times in the past. He took a rope that way. Then he took a pot and this pot was also not ordinary. It had some holes inside, small, small holes inside were there. Of course, if the hole is very big, then you wouldn't be able to use the pot. Then he took some small plants and he planted them upside down. Have we heard of the practice of planting uh, upside down? I don't know how many of you are aware, but it is popularly narrated in the story of Chanakya. But what Chanakya did was a very different thing. Chanakya uprooted a plant, planted it back upside down and poured hot water on the roots to imply that he was going to make the then ruling dynasty Nirmula. He wanted to take revenge on the Nanda emperor and he behaved that way to signify the anger that he had in his mind and the resentment that he had in his mind. That is a very different kind of an example. Here we are seeing about Paramasatvikas. Absolutely peaceful people. So, some small plants that were planted upside down now it shouldn't be asked, oh, isn't he hurting the plants? No, if it has touched the Ayurveda, it means 
in all probabilities, the plant would attain moksha, the jiva that is there inside the plant. But anyway, he planted these upside down and he took this rope, tied it to the pot, put the pot into the well and started pulling the rope. What happened? Let us say one time the rope gave away. Then he somehow, he climbed down, took it back, tied it again, tied a very strong knot in, took water up. Now the pot, by the time it comes up, most of its water is already drained. There is very little water left. With that little water, he poured it on the plant. Now this plant, this grass, which has been planted upside down, its root is receiving water, but its root is not underground. What is the chance of the water actually helping the plant? This is not some hot water that is going to destroy the plant. But the plant is already receiving very little water. And out of that too, only an extremely little amount would be absorbed by the root. And that too has to go to the plant. The shoot is now underground. It has to go to the leaves. Now the leaves cannot perform photosynthesis. But the water has to help the plant survive. How difficult is it going to be? It is going to be an extremely difficult thing. Almost an impossibility. We cannot say it is 100% impossible. The plant will definitely die. We cannot say that. But it is extremely unlikely. Getting water itself is difficult. right? By the time he gets the water, if at all he manages it, only very little water comes out. That water also he is pouring in an upside down plant. How is it going to work properly? It is not going to work properly. So, in this manner, he was again and again taking water. He was drawing water from the well. Tirmay Sayarwar asked him, What are you doing? You seem to be doing a very difficult thing. There are much easier things to do. Get a better pot. Get a better rope. Look at this plant. It is upside down. If you really want the plant to live, if you are very intelligent, what should you be doing? You should make sure that the shoot is above the ground, the root is below the ground. You pour water to the soil. And you ensure that water reaches the soil, even if you pour it on the grass. Then you take water with a proper pot and a proper rope. Isn't that what you should be doing? What you are doing is very different. The Advar replied that what you are seeing is what you are doing. When Pei Advar spoke in this manner, Bhargaviya understood the problem that he himself was facing. By performing Sharanagati to Bhagavan, Sriman Narayana, it is very easy and very fast. In a very fast way, we can get moksha, which is a guarantee. But if we try to get moksha by following a longer route, we may not get it. What are longer routes? There are many longer routes. There are some people who think that being morally good is enough. In fact, there are people who think even that is not necessary. You know, there are people who say the theory of karma means nothing. We have never seen it happen. We have seen evil politicians live happily till the end of their lives. We have seen good people suffering. So there is no such thing as karma. Do whatever you want. Doesn't matter. There were such people. You should be happy. For you to be happy, do whatever you want. Such people were there in our country. And this, I should make a point here. This is one of the reasons why any and every culture that originated in India is not necessarily logical, is not necessarily dharmic, it is not necessarily righteous. We need to point this out. There was Hiranyakashipu at one point of time. He created a new religion. 
that was also created in india what was the religion it was a religion where hiranyakashipu was worshipped as god he was worshipped as the supreme it did not last for long we all know what happened to him but that is also a religion that is also an indian religion does it mean that we will acknowledge it as real or that we would acknowledge it as sanatana dharma hiranyakashipu said i accept the vedas fully but he told the teachers you teach vedas but teach in such a way that wherever the term for supreme being comes you interpret it as hiranyakashipu i don't know how you are going to do it but this is what you should do so would we call it a vedic faith just because it accepted it claimed to accept the vedas we should not so what hiranyakashipu did why are we moving on way to hiranyakashipu because we are trying to make some important point here what hiranyakashipu did it believed the the followers of there at that time the children who studied during the days of kingship of hiranyakashipu they taught they thought they know the vedas but they understood it in a very different way they thought hiranyakashipu is sakshat paramatma praying to our king who is ruling when the king went to vaikuntha narayana ran away that kind of great king look at the stories of his king of our king such a great king the devas are all scared he has defeated them in battle he has enslaved all of them he is indeed paramatma in this way people were thinking but just because it had a native origin we do not call it dharmic we do not call it sanatani we do not call it logical in fact we don't even call it practical because it was full of lies in the same way there are certain faiths there are certain faiths that are having a native origin but are not giving the correct result then there are some other faiths they give the correct result but they give slowly but if you want to attain moksha and if you want to attain it very quickly what should you do you should perform prapatti prapatti meaning prapatti yoga meaning paripurna sharanagati with the angas as have been discussed before anukulyasya sankalpah pratikulyasya varjanam rakshishyati iti vishwasah gopatritva varanam tatha atmanikshepa karpanye shadvidha sharanagati that is the shloka given in the agamas anukulyasya sankalpah do things that please bhagavan pratikulyasya varjanam ensure that nothing that displeases him is done such things should be done after the declaration of surrender we declare surrender when we do not mean it we would not want to do it it is very easy to say i surrender in christianity i think i have given this example before of general dyer after committing a big crime at jallianwala bag he went to england he went to a church he apologized for his sins the father of the, the christian head of that church he said you are forgiven very simple right you commit a big crime and then you go and you confess you say i have committed a big crime please forgive me does that really give forgiveness no if you repent for it from your heart then forgiveness would be given if you don't repent from your heart if you are faking it then what so there is a difference a person who truly surrenders to bhagavan that too out of love because bhakti involves love it does not involve fear a person who surrenders to bhagavan in that way would definitely want to please bhagavan we are not surrendering like pakistani soldiers surrendering to india in 1971 out of fear oh you are too powerful i cannot oppose you therefore you can kill me whenever you want i am scared you are all powerful almighty that is why i am surrendering to you no i find you very attractive i find you to be very pleasing i find you to be pleasing in all aspects why because you 
हे भगवन यू आर प्लीसिंग इन ऑल एस्पेक्ट भगवत रामानुजा डिस्क्राइब्स भगवान एस निखिल है प्रत्यनिक ही रिपेल्स एवरी इन मीनिंग he does not possess a single bad quality in fact they are repelled and they go away by bhagavan when when bhagavan is present likewise kalyana ikatana he has only auspicious qualities how many auspicious qualities does he have he has infinite auspicious qualities in fact he has infinite groups of auspicious qualities each auspicious quality itself being of infinite measure such an infinity we uh, such infinities we attribute to bhagavan so he has only auspicious qualities like he shows us compassion he is attractive ever attractive all attractive attractive in all aspects that is one of the meanings of the word krishna and he is always righteous he is all knowing in this manner we can go on and on and on we will not be able to list fully because there are infinite groups of auspicious qualities he is a treasure chest of infinite groups of auspicious qualities bhagavan as he is that way he has such qualities that attract us and therefore we get attracted and when we get attracted to him of course when i say attract then if he is so great why doesn't he attack attract everybody he attracts only some people right we just said there are people who even worshiped hiranyakashipu why did they not get attracted by narayana at that time that is because of their karma but if you have come to know about him and about his auspicious qualities then there would be sneha that love towards bhagavan it should increase if you are performing bhakti yoga that love should be shown non stop and it at a perfect level which is very difficult for us but if if we want to surrender if we want to follow the prapatti marga there there is a formal declaration of surrender that is done through one out of the four ways vanishtha ukti nishtha acharya nishtha bhagavata nishtha they say there are four different ways to perform prapatti if you are already very scholarly and very saintly you could do vanishtha declare the surrender by yourself if you are not but if you are otherwise very qualified then you could have a great acharya or a great uh, a great acharya to tell you how to declare the surrender you will see how thing to declare surrender why should you be taught how to declare surrender because not many people understand the nature of surrender as i said surrender automatically implies that you love the person you surrender to in this context right so they learn and then they recite my declaration of surrender when there is acharya nishtha where the acharya himself declares it on our behalf he says my acharyas have done it for me you are going to save me i know you i know your nature i have surrendered to you and therefore you are going to save me these are my people these are people are dear to you they want to surrender to you therefore i surrender on their behalf as i am surrendering to you on their behalf please accept my surrender why should you accept my surrender because you accepted my acharya surrender and he said accept my shishya surrender why did you accept my acharya surrender because his acharya surrendered to you and said this is my shishya accept his surrender in this manner the generations have passed since the days of bhagavad ramanuja 
maybe even before that plenty of people were practicing but at least bhagavad ramanuja was promised directly by bhagavan that whoever surrenders to you would automatically be granted moksha by me but again the word surrender is there surrendering to bhagavad ramanuja how do you surrender there that is done by again behaving in a way that pleases bhagavad ramanuja not behaving in a way that does not please ramanuja and so on what way would please him following the scriptures of course if you behave in a way that pleases bhagavan bhagavata is pleased bhagavad ramanuja would be pleased if you behave in a way that pleases bhagavan very simple so they align completely okay so in this manner acharya nishtha works maybe you don't have an acharya nearby but there is a great bhagavata then that great bhagavata that bhagavata prapanna can perform prapatti for us he can help us to surrender to bhagavan that is another way so in this manner there are four different ways we will get in we will once again visit all of these today's class is not meant to explain all of these in the greatest detail but the point here is somehow or the other through an acharya or by repeating the words of an acharya or through a bhagavata or whatever we have to surrender to bhagavan we have to declare surrender okay is it okay to just surrender no we have to surrender to bhagavan i said why if i surrender to my school teacher maybe i might get good marks in school the teacher might not be able to give me anything better if i surrender to my boss at work maybe i would get a promotion but that is the best that he can do if i surrender to a king i might get lots of wealth i might even be made into a minister because he is pleased with me i am pleasing him in every way but what could the king give me in the best case scenario the king could make me his successor so what will i become i will become the king can the king make me anything superior to him no his best ability is being a king therefore the best thing that he can offer is kingship if i surrender to indra then at best i can also become the ruler of swarga at best i can share the throne with him indra shared with arjuna we see all of those things indra sometimes there are people who do so much punya that they also go there but when they are experiencing as they experience swarga their punya karma is getting depleted as they are experiencing indra loka eventually they will have to be reborn somewhere else or if they are unlucky enough they might get a curse from there and then get uh, the form of something like a snake or something all of these things are there in the scriptures there are examples already so even indra cannot give us a state that is eternal of eternal bliss eternal happiness that is sustained he cannot give his position itself is not permanent plus even during his rule once in a while the asuras attack he runs away we see all of those stories in the scriptures so we know that if we want the best result we need to surrender to the best person in this context of surrendering what are we seeking we are seeking moksha and we are seeking moksha quickly for us to get moksha quickly firstly we should surrender to a person who can grant moksha and we should surrender in such a way that we get it quickly from him hence it is stated by the shri vaishnava acharyas that we perform prapatti to shri man narayana shri man narayana is moksha pradayaka he is moksha pradayaka he grants moksha this is admitted by all 
ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಈವೆನ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಭಗವದ್ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮಧ್ವಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಶೈವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಪ್ಪಯ್ಯ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಹೂ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಶಿವ ಭಕ್ತ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೆಡ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಶಿವ ವರ್ಷಿಪರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಶೈವಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ವಿಲ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಸದ್ಗತಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ರಿಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ರಿಫ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಅಕ್ನಾಲೇಜ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಸೊ ಯು ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಡಿ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಮೀ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಶಿವ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಟೆಲ್ ಮೀ ಡಿ ಯು ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಶೈವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಪ್ಪಯ್ಯ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಎನಿವೇ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶೈವ ಪುರಾಣ ವಿ ಸಿ ಶಿವ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಲ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಇನ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪುರಾಣ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇಸ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಅ ವೇ ವಿ ಡೂ ಅನ್ ಅಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಸರೆಂಡರ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಅಟೈನ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಮಚ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ನೋ ಇಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫೈಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ explain further no very clear okay now i said we need to perform prapatti to shriman narayana what if we are not bhaktas of shriman narayana paya dikshita said if you don't consider shriman narayana to be paramatma it means you are not accepting the vedas okay maybe i will accept him as paramatma but i will not worship him then what one person asks another person asks okay i don't accept vedas so what i don't like vishnu i don't like vedas so what so there are two categories of people and what would happen to each of these types need to be needs to be seen the first one what happens to asatvikas asatvikas means people who are not satvik in nature they don't have sadguna krishna talks about these people correct in bhagavad gita for example in the 17th chapter he says yajante satvika devan yajante satvika devan yaksharaksamsi rajasah pretan bhuta ganan shanye yajante tama sajanah krishna says satvik people worship devas be it indra be it shiva be it vishnu satvik people are known to worship deities what about the rajasik people they don't worship they worship yakshas and rakshas maybe they would worship a king maybe they would worship a very powerful uh, spirit what about tamasik people they would worship evil beings pretan bhuta ganan shanye yajante tamasa janaha so people who are not satvikas they would get a phala that is limited as i explained if i what will happen if i worship a teacher what will happen if i worship a king i gave all of those examples so antavattu phalam tesham as krishna says the phala that they get is limited it has an anta it has an end in what terms does it have an end it has an end in the sense that 
it is not of infinite magnitude. The happiness that you get is not of infinite magnitude. Any quality that you might get by pleasing that entity, it would be limited in magnitude. Wealth, even if a king gives me all his wealth, that is not infinite wealth. It might be a lot of wealth. Let us say I please somebody, some very rich person, Ambani. He, he says, you can use all my wealth as much as you want. But it is still limited. He might be extremely rich, one of the richest people on earth. But the wealth is still limited. It is not unlimited. So there is always a chance that I run out of it. Secondly, the phala that you get by worshipping such beings is having an end in terms of time as well. Like I gave the example of worshipping Indra. I worship Indra. Does it mean I will have Svargavasa forever? No. For some amount of time, I might be able to experience it. At some point of time, it would end. So, at some point of time, I would stop. Like even if I worship Ambani, he gives me all the wealth. At some point of time, I will die. Then what? I myself will die. Then what will the wealth do for me? So it is not permanent. After I die, when I am reborn, is anybody going to remember that I, I am supposed to inherit all of Ambani's wealth? No, that is not going to happen. Whatever life I get is going to depend on my past karmas. Prarabdha karma, whatever has come there. Based on that, the life is going to happen. So there is no guarantee. In fact, there is 0% guarantee. There is not even 0.0001% chance or even any lesser amount of... There is no non-zero chance of... That, that means there is no chance of getting a permanent good bhala. What about a permanent bad bhala? As per Sri Vaishnavism, as per the teachings of philosophers like Bhagavad Ramanuja, Eternal bad state does not exist as it goes contradictory to the claim that Bhagavan is supremely compassionate. However, for very, very long periods of time, if we are evil and we worship evil deities and we do evil things and so on, or maybe we are atheists, we don't care about dharma, we do as we please. So, you know, even among atheists, there are some people who are morally good. If you do morally good things, you will at least get punya. But if you are immoral, because there is no authority that you fear, I don't fear Bhagavan, I don't, I don't believe in Bhagavan, I don't fear law, I have a lot of money. If I'm a very evil person that way, and if I do lots and lots and lots of crimes over several lives, then for a very long period of time, I might get a bad state of living. All of that is going to be there. So this is what happens to Asatvikas. They, why are we discussing this? Assuming that they surrender. Why should they surrender to Sriman Narayana? That is what we are talking about. So those who don't surrender, obviously they are not going to get that kind of a phala. But those who do surrender, even by surrendering, they get only the best that can be provided by the entity to whom they are surrendering. So, Asatvikas cannot get Svarga as they don't even worship Devas. Maybe they can get Svarga by doing a lot of Punya. But that is not a Phala that comes from the surrender. The Sharanagati Phala is different from their Punya Karma Phala. So the Punya Karma that they do, maybe it could give them Swarga. But what is the point of going to Swarga? It is still limited. It is not eternal. So that is a there. That is always there. So they have this problem. Furthermore, furthermore, these people, due to being in the mode of ignorance, that is the reason why they are not Satvik, right? Either they could be very evil 
or maybe they could be very lazy or maybe they are neither evil nor lazy but they are very much driven by their senses and impulse impulse driven sense driven ego driven people what happens to them they end up committing sins because they are too impulse driven or too emotionally driven they suddenly get so angry i worshiped you for so long you did not give me anything that fellow is literally worshiping a non existing being and that guy got everything that guy has become the ruler whereas i am still a beggar therefore i hate you i know you exist but you are not helping me therefore i hate you there might be people who speak in this manner or there might be people who lose faith itself altogether so depending on the extent of ignorance that they have and depending on their past karma they would go further and further away from bhagavan away from the state of moksha why do we require moksha bhagavad ramanuja says towards the starting of the shri bhashya he says when you go through the vedas you realize that there is a phala that is possible to be attained what kind of phala is it it is that kind of phala that kind of that state of being that is eternal and eternally blissful and eternally auspicious in all ways there is the vedas seem to hint if you study the vedas you would realize that they are hinting at such a state the they are hinting at the possibility of such a state therefore people would naturally become curious people who want to know more about that state so that they can attain it would naturally get more curious and enquire out of curiosity they would enquire they would delve deeper into scriptures and try to learn more about it this he says in his commentary on the very first sutra so those kinds of people would get more and more knowledge they would get closer and closer to bhagavan so there is a reason why moksha needs to be attained right it is a state of being where there is no suffering it is eternally blissful eternally auspicious no sadness no sickness no anger no tension permanently in that kind of a state who would not want such a state hmm? who would not want such a state of being but if you don't even want moksha if you don't even know the concept of moksha if you don't even know that such a state exists and therefore you do nothing if you are ignorant you would not go closer and if you are evil you will go farther away that is what happens to asatvikas what about satvikas satvik people who are not worshiping narayana what will happen to them there might be satvik people right who are not worshiping shriman narayana maybe there is a person who worships only ganesha maybe there is a person who worships only shiva maybe there is a person who worships only uh, parvati durga shakti or however he calls her there might be what about them if they are living a satvik style of life are they going to suffer if we look at abrahamic religions we are told that people who reject allah always suffer people who do not believe in allah are always suffering they will get eternal hell if somebody does not worship shri man narayana but is very satvik would he get eternal hell no a person who is satvik but does not accept allah according to the quran he would get eternal hell likewise in christianity also it is said but here we say if the person is satvik in nature if the person is morally good righteous has good thoughts good words good actions even if he is not worshiping shri man narayana today eventually he will worship eventually he will worship those who worship surya deva for example 
eventually eventually over a number of lives they would become bhaktas of narayana why is surya deva any other deva if you are sattvic continuously eventually you will get closer to shriman narayana what if i am a shiva bhakta oh yes vaishnavas and shaivas are opposites of each other vaishnavas hate shaivas shaivas hate vaishnavas so if i worship shiva according to vaishnavas i should go to naraka if i worship vishnu according to shaivas i should go to naraka no it is not like that neither do pure shaivas believe so nor do pure vaishnavas believe so they don't pure vaishnavas do not believe that shiva bhakti leads to naraka or suffering and pure shaivas do not believe that vishnu bhakti leads to naraka or suffering as i already cited appaya dikshita who is these days celebrated as appaya dikshitendra he has analyzed the vedas and accepted that narayana is paramatma okay but what happens to the sattvikas we are not answering that what happens if i don't worship shriman narayana if i don't worship shriman narayana then of course whatever happens whether or not i worship him depending on my karma the karma phala is going to come that is already known but we are talking in the context of prapatti so suppose i surrender to somebody else will i get moksha or will i not if i surrender to shiva will i never get moksha no shri vaishnavas do not say so shankarasya cha yo bhakta there is a beautiful shloka in the puranas cited by swami vedanta deshika he cites it in rahasya trayasara shankarasya cha yo bhakta sapta janmantaram naraha tasyaiva tu prasadena विष्णु भक्त प्रजाते शंकर से यो भक्त ही हु इज अ डिबोटी ऑफ शिव फॉर सेवन लाइफ इफ ही शोस शिव भक्ति देन सप्त जन्मांतर सह नर एट आफ्टर सेवन लाइफ ऑफ बीइंग अ शिव भक्त ही वुड बिकम अ विष्णु भक्त it is stated in scripture deshika is merely citing these are not his own words these are the words of veda vyasa shankarasya sayo shankarasya cha yo bhakta sapta janmantaram naraha tasyaiva tu prasadena by the blessings of shiva by the blessings of shiva tasyaiva tu prasadena vishnu bhakta prajayate in his eight life he will be born as a vishnu bhakta by the blessings of shiva he will get vishnu bhakti okay so if he gets vishnu bhakti he will become a bhakta of vishnu he will do prapatti to vishnu he will get moksha what if he is a bhakta of vishnu vasudevasya yo bhakta vasudevasya yo bhakta sapta janmantaram naraha tasyaiva tu prasadena vasudeve praliyate de attain vasudeva himself so whether he started with vishnu bhakti or whether he got vishnu bhakti after getting shiva bhakti does not matter name bhakta pranashyati bhagavan always gives the phal <clears throat> so even if you worship shiva you would eventually get vishnu bhakti there is a beautiful story about this in harivamsha ಹರಿವಂಶ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಖಿಲ ಭಾಗ ಆಫ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಅಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಡೇಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೇ ಖಿಲ ಭಾಗ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೂಸ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಅಪೆಂಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸೊ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೇ ಓ ಅಪೆಂಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಅಡಿಷನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಉತ್ತರಾಖಂಡ ಲೇಟರ್ ಅಟೆಂಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಅಡಿಷನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಥೆಂಟಿಕ್ ಹರಿವಂಶ later addition not authentic a lot of people believe that way but in reality that is not so uttarakhand is authentic only in ramayana we have a com- complete commentary on it and we can def- uh, defend all of its shlokas all the original shlokas if somebody produces fake shlokas we can't help likewise in mahabharata there is a part at the end after the 18 parvas called harivamsha this harivamsha 
a lot of acharyas have cited from it adi shankara acharya has cited ramanuja acharya has also cited vedanta deshika has also cited a lot of people have cited it so in harivamsha there is a story of a pishacha called hanta karana he was a pishacha he was not even a human what would he do he would eat humans ghanta karana his real name was something else but he got the name ghanta karana because he wore earrings that were small bells so if he shakes his head the bells would ring the bells which are which form his earrings they would ring and when would he shake his head whenever the name of vishnu is said he would shake his head not out of happiness but out of hatred for vishnu he would get repulsed by the very name of vishnu so if somebody says vishnu he would hate vishnu so much that he would shake his head the bells would uh, produce so much sound that he does not hear anything more about what is said about vishnu he used to hate vishnu that much but but fortunately due to his past punya he had great bhakti in shiva he had such great bhakti that he got to go to kailasha there shiva do you know shiva is not just a deity of destruction he is attributed for a lot of things one of the popularly known auspic auspicious qualities of shiva is how he teaches people shiva is called dakshinamurti he is a deity who grants knowledge and wisdom deep knowledge deep wisdom at the level of shiva shiva is called sarvagnya by vedanta deshika what knowledge can sarvagnya give sarvam everything that level the greatest possible teacher is there ghanta karna is listening and shiva starts talking about vishnu ghanta karna doesn't understand we showed great bhakti towards shiva we got this phala of sitting alongside great sages and great beings great shiva pada sevakas we are here we thought we are doing the right thing by accusing or hating vishnu but shiva is talking about the greatness of vishnu shiva gave a lecture on the greatness of vishnu and further on the greatness of moksha and further on how to attain moksha and further on how to surrender to vishnu having heard all of this ghanta karna realized what he needs to do i may have hated vishnu but if shiva is saying this it has to be correct i know for a fact that shiva is speaking the truth therefore let me ask him he asked shiva how do i attain vishnu how do i attain moksha how do i surrender to him tell me how to do it shiva said this is krishna avatara kala krishna is there on earth you go meet him you go meet him you will get moksha don't worry i am re recommending you i am sending you there myself so don't worry what was krishna doing at that time that is an even more interesting story krishna was coming towards shiva to pray to shiva for a child such leela hmm? but krishna was traveling krishna was traveling for a night he had stopped his chariot has stopped at that time ghanta karna saw him and ghanta karna immediately killed a brahmana they say it is a brahmana from srirangam itself he killed a vaishnava brahmana and he immediately offered freshly prepared human meat to krishna ghanta karna does not know much about what is dharma and what is adharma he has lived all his life by killing and eating humans 
he did not bother. But according to him, if I really like you, what will I give? I will give you what I like. Like if you have seen people who have a cat as a pet. If a cat likes birds, if it likes to hunt birds, and if it likes its owner, sometimes it might hunt a bird and then gift that bird to the owner. These kinds of things are seen in animals. Ghantakarna was a pishacha. He did the same thing. With a single slab, he killed the brahmana. And he offered fresh meat, fresh human meat to Krishna. In hopes of getting anugraha. Krishna gave back life to that brahmana. And told Ghantakarna, I accept your pure bhakti. But you need to live in a sattvic manner. So henceforth, live in a sattvic manner. At the end of this life, you will attain moksha. In this manner, Ghantakarna attained moksha by becoming a sattvika. So from a sattvika behavior to a sattvika behavior, when he changed, he got the anugraha of Sriman Narayana and he attained moksha. That is the story. So, what does Payadvar really convey through his watering of the plant? He says, if you perform prapati to Sriman Narayana, you would get the phala immediately. If you don't do it, it will only take a longer amount of time. I am not saying it will never happen. But after a long amount of time, again you are going to come only to Sriman Narayana. Why not do it right away? That is what you were supposed to do. You have moved away. Why don't you return? Having understood this, Bhargaviya returned to Siddhanta. That is the story. We do see the story misinterpreted here and there. People talking about hatred between Vaishnavas and Shaivas and so on. But we try to, <laughs> we try our best to say it is not a kind of hatred. It is a kind of difference of opinion. If you go and ask Shaivas, they will say the quickest way to attain Moksha is to surrender to Shiva. Surrender it to Vishnu will take you a longer time. In this manner, there are people who say. So that is a respectable difference of opinion. So I would like to conclude today's session here. If anybody has any question uh, or any part that you did not understand, please let me know. No, it was okay. very comprehensive uh, discourse on surrender, importance of surrender to Narayana and then uh, Moksha. You also compared some other religions. Uh, next time, uh, can you start with, uh, there are three religions out of Hinduism which came in India, Jainism, Buddhism. Buddhism and Sikhism, they also say you can attain Nirvana or Moksha. And all. So next week maybe you can cover on that. Fine. So we will uh, we will look at uh, the concept of uh, supreme uh, state of existence as per them as well. We will compare them next time. Thank you. Yes, uh, somebody raised their hand. Uh, Guruji. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, to create any argument or something. I am a Vaishnavite and mm -hmm. I've also heard this uh, saying that you've come to Vishnu's Pada uh, by your thing and no more rebirth if you, you know, this is your last birth, pray Vishnu. But then when I started reading uh, Shaivism, I found 63 nine Mars and 12... Uh, this thing who have got the enlightenment. So I am a little confused. So I've come to Shaivism to, you know, study against my family. So which should we believe? You say that if you don't, uh, I mean, Vishnu Pata, then there is no more rebirth, right? That's what my family tells me. See, uh, studying to know is not wrong. Asking a question, which one should I follow? Should I follow Vaishnava ah. or Shaivism? Is a, uh, is a question uh, the, which, uh, as a Vaishnava, I would obviously say you should worship Vishnu. But if uh, Shaivas hear it, they might feel offended. Then they will say, why did you ask a Vaishnava? You should ask us. We will say that it is Shiva. An unnecessary argument will only spring out of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that is not something that we appreciate. But yes. uh, what uh, I could tell you, one thing that I can definitely clarify to you, 
though there are more than 16 iron wires, but there are not even 20 iron wires. Why is that so? We do not say that only the iron wires got moksha. And as far as my understanding of Shaivism goes, even they do not say that only the Nayan Mars got moksha. As a matter of fact, uh, in uh, Shiva Purana, in Linga Purana, in their Puranas also, other beings have also got moksha. So uh, it is not as though, uh, though they have a greater number of Nayan Mars, Nay Nayanar. It's, it's plural in English. I don't know whether they call it Nayanars or Nayan Mars because Nayan Mars is the plural in Tamil. But uh, just because uh, the number of their saints is more, it does not mean that more people got moksha in their path and less people got moksha in this path. There is no such thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. INR is a very great uh, Shaiva saint who lived as a very pure Shiva Bhakta and taught Shiva Bhakti and how to surrender to Shiva by uh, his life. Likewise, Advar for Vishnu, uh, that is all. But uh, any and every Shiva Bhakta uh, is not called Nayanar and any and every Vishnu Bhakta is not called Alvar. We should remember this. Uh, we, like in Sri Vaishnavism, we say, we talked about Sharanagati Marga. We say those who perform Sharanagati to Vishnu attain Moksha. We do not say that only the Alvars perform Sharanagati. We say the Acharyas performed, their Shishyas performed, Shishyas of their Shishyas performed, everybody performed. Lots and lots of people performed. Even animals got moksha. Birds got moksha. Jatayu got moksha. It is there in Ramayana, right? So yes. uh, we, we do not say, so do we call Jatayu as Jatayu Advar? Do we uh, add Jatayu to the list of 12? We don't. Okay. Yet Jatayu got moksha. So it is okay. not uh, the number of Advars or Nahidvars that uh, decides uh, moksha. What decides is the bhava that you have and the fact that you have a pure bhakti and you perform sharanagati that is what matters so this much i can tell you with 100% okay. clarity okay okay, okay. Um, this is Malati. Uh, I just wanted to say, basically, I think uh, one should uh, just follow one's heart and mind and, uh, you know, uh, be a little open and, uh, you know, not get into any course. controversies of any sort. Because what happens is nowadays it's become a world full of controversies. So Very it's best is to... You know, keep a pure mind, live a pure life, a sattvic life. And uh, maybe that way we will absorb what we know is really true and not really bother about any other, uh, you know, arguments or something that comes up. And we lead a more peaceful life. So do you agree with me? Sir? Your, your point is a very, very valid one. Uh, there are, in fact, it has a number of components that need to be specifically mentioned, like you said, peaceful life, you said, avoiding yeah. of controversies, mm. and so on. Uh, they should be highlighted. Yet, there is a word of caution that needs to be given there. Unfortunately, I don't believe there is enough time to discuss about this. It would take 10 15 minutes if uh, I need to give justice uh, to my uh, response. On to this uh, statement. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe uh, 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 next, next week, uh, next week we'll and we'll be yes. able to kind of understand. It would so be, maybe it we'll would await be, that. It would yes. be a combination because uh, the request that came before yours was to uh, discuss some non-Vedic uh, faiths, the concept of supreme yeah. faith in some yeah. non-Vedic So we will so, discuss that and we will discuss this as well. We yeah. don't get clarified. Okay. Um, it will become much easier. Namakum puri Yes. It's definitely. much better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guruji. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. We shall meet tomorrow. Thank you, Swati. We enjoyed every moment. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know about what you spoke.